Hello. In this episode, we will continue to introduce the forecasting of tropical cyclones and talk about their local effects. The local wind strength forecast is a very important element in determining when to issue tropical cyclone signals. One of the tools used in forecasting the local wind strength is a probability curve, also known as kidneys. Simply put, it represents a specific area on the map. When a tropical cyclone enters the area, certain locations in Hong Kong will have high winds. This is the statistical computation of observation records of past tropical cyclones affecting Hong Kong over many years. The example in the figure is under the typhoon category, with the strong winds kidneys of Waglan Island, showing a 30%, 50% and 70% probability curve. Therein, the 70% curve indicates that there will be 70% chance of strong winds at Waglan Island when a typhoon enters that area. It can be deduced that the area covered by the 50% curve is larger than that of the 70% curve, since for the same category of tropical cyclones, the probability of bringing strong winds will be lower when the tropical cyclone is located further away from Hong Kong. As for which probability curve to be used, it's necessary to consider the circulation size of the tropical cyclone itself. When the circulation of the tropical cyclone is larger, the larger kidney should then be used. In addition, under the combined influence of the northeast monsoon, the compound effect will lead to stronger winds, and so a larger kidney should also be used. In forecasting operations, forecasters just need to overlay the kidneys of different regions in Hong Kong on the tropical cyclone forecast track in order to forecast when the tropical cyclones will start bringing strong or gale force winds to that region and when the winds will start to weaken. Nevertheless, if the tropical cyclone has an asymmetrical structure and an atypical track, the kidneys will then not be completely effective. As for the wind direction forecast, the observatory uses a tool known as the beach ball. When a tropical cyclone is located in a certain position on the beach ball, the winds in Hong Kong will be generally blowing in the direction indicated by the beach ball. For example, the tropical cyclone in track A in the figure is moving west-northwest, making landfall to the east of Hong Kong. The local wind direction will gradually change from northwesterly to southwesterly. Whereas the tropical cyclone in track B is adopting a west-northwestward track to make landfall to the west of Hong Kong. The local wind direction will gradually change from northeasterly to southeasterly. Winds blowing perpendicular to the direction of the airport runway are known as crosswinds. If the crosswinds are too strong during the landing of the aircraft, the aircraft may be blown off the center line of the runway, posing a danger. On the afternoon of 2nd of July 2022, tropical cyclone Chaba made landfall in western Guangdong. As Chaba was located to the southwest of Hong Kong, winds blowing over Hong Kong were south to southeasterly. Departing and landing aircrafts at the airport were then affected by the southerly crosswinds, making them more difficult to control. In addition, when strong southerly winds blow across the mountain gaps of Lantau, streaks of strong and weak airstreams would be formed downstream. When these airstreams cross the departing and landing pass of the airport, apart from bringing strong crosswinds, they can sometimes produce severe wind shear and turbulence, which may further affect flight safety. In order to predict the possible effects of crosswinds on departing and landing aircrafts, the airport has a set of kidneys to deal with the crosswinds. For instance, if a tropical cyclone adopts track A, the probability that it will bring northwesterly crosswinds greater than 20 knots to the airport would be slightly higher than 30%. For a tropical cyclone adopting track B, the probability that it will bring southeasterly crosswinds greater than 20 knots to the airport would be higher than 50%. Some rapidly developing tropical cyclones, especially those which intensify sharply near the coast, can pose a great challenge to the forecasting work. On the morning of 17th of August 2020, there was a low-pressure area near the Luzon Strait. From the satellite imagery, only loosely organized cloud bands could be seen. That low-pressure area then moved rapidly into the northern part of the South China Sea and developed into tropical cyclone Higos. Under favorable conditions, such as warm seawater, weak vertical wind shear, and fair upper-level divergence, etc., Higos intensified rapidly on the 18th. 
The satellite imagery that evening showed that the structure of Higos became very compact. With the approach of Higos, winds over Hong Kong strengthened rapidly on the night of 18th of August. Higos came within a 100 kilometer distance from Hong Kong and intensified into a typhoon that night. The eye could clearly be discerned on the radar. The observatory needed to issue the number 9 increasing gale or storm signal. The time from the issuance of number 1 to number 9 signal by the observatory was only 21 hours and 50 minutes. This was the fourth shortest duration on record. Regarding the track forecast, each of the computer models on 18th of August generally forecasted that Higos would move to the vicinity of Leizhou and Hainan after formation. The forecast track was more westward than the actual track. As for the intensity forecast, on the evening of 17th of August, limited computer models still couldn't capture the rapid intensification of Higos nor its actual intensity. We can see some limitations in the computer models in mastering certain rapidly intensifying tropical cyclones. In fact, both tropical cyclone Vicente in 2012 and tropical cyclone Hado in 2017 rapidly intensified before making landfall on the coast of southern China. The latter even reached super typhoon category. In the northern hemisphere, winds surrounding a tropical cyclone turned counterclockwise in the right semicircle of the tropical cyclone's moving direction. As the wind direction is the same as that of the moving direction of the tropical cyclone, the winds will be stronger. Hence, it is also known as the dangerous semicircle. For the wind direction in the left semicircle, it is opposite to the moving direction of the tropical cyclone. As part of the wind strength will be offset, it is therefore known as the navigable semicircle. If the tropical cyclone makes landfall to the west of Hong Kong, as Hong Kong is located in the dangerous semicircle, local winds would generally be stronger than for a tropical cyclone that makes landfall to the east of Hong Kong. Moreover, the subtropical ridge of high pressure is normally located to the northeast of a tropical cyclone. The pressure gradient between them will be tighter and thereby the wind force will be stronger. If a tropical cyclone moves northwestwards, the dangerous semicircle would just overlap with a tightened pressure gradient on the northeastern side, which will further increase the wind strength there. The convective activity inside the tropical cyclone is very intense. When the air rises, rain bands will form. When the air rises to the top of the troposphere, it will flow outward and will subside in the outer periphery of the tropical cyclone. When a tropical cyclone is located near Taiwan, Hong Kong will be affected by the outer subsiding air. It will be sunny with light winds resulting in very hot weather. Besides, the northwesterly winds in the outer circulation of a tropical cyclone will also bring suspended particulates from inland to Hong Kong, causing haze and a drop in visibility. On 8th of August 2015, Tropical Cyclone Sadalor crossed Taiwan, affected by the outer subsiding air ahead of it. The weather in Hong Kong was extremely hot. Many places recorded extreme high temperatures of 36 degrees Celsius or above. Before the approach of Tropical Cyclone Hado to Hong Kong in 2017, the observatory headquarters recorded a temperature of 36.6 degrees Celsius, which was the highest maximum temperature on record. Indeed, the top two extreme high temperatures recorded at the observatory were related to the outer subsiding air of tropical cyclones. At the outer periphery of a tropical cyclone, intense sunshine will cause the temperatures over inland regions to rise sharply. The heated air will produce convection. When the rising airstream reaches a certain intensity, it may overcome the subsiding air and rise to the upper level, producing thunderstorms. On 10th of September 2010, a tropical cyclone made landfall over the coast of Fujian. The weak northerly winds in its outer periphery converged with a sea breeze over the coast of Guangdong, forming a cluster of severe thunderstorms and producing rainstorm. In the past, there were even cases of thunderstorms formed by a related mechanism, which brought hail to Hong Kong. In the next episode, we'll continue to introduce to you other impacts brought by tropical cyclones. Goodbye.